Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on our discussion of the works from the brilliant Japanese filmmaker and artist named Takeshi Kitano, also known as Beat Takeshi. This is his film from 2010, and I must be very honest with you up front, this is absolutely one of my favorite works from Takeshi Kitano, and I love it and admire it to this very day. I continue to be in awe and thrilled by this film, which is called Outrage, or in English, Outrage. So what to say about this film? It is a Japanese gangster film that is high voltage, high octane, to the max, uh, ultra violent, ultra cool, ultra stylish, and very much through and through a Takashi Kitano film in all the splendor and glory that that means and entails. So this is a, an unbelievably entertaining and shocking and wonderful example of a film in the body of the filmography of Takeshi Kitano. So, in essence, what this film is, it's a gangster film. It's a Yakuza film. And it's a story about one large criminal organization, a Japanese gangster criminal organization. And within that, there are various sub-communities or sub-categories or sub-families. Uh, and uh, factions, and from that we get a story about what essentially is uh, inter-family or factional warfare that occurs within this one large organization. And we have how incidents lead to, or incidents or petty jealousies or rivalries or just uh, seemingly random incidents or uh, offenses lead to uh, escalation, uh, events lead to events, and coincident and um, circumstances and uh, uh, outcomes and results of events lead to further escalation and then further escalation, and then more factions come in. And so this escalation means that this faction needs to be targeted, and then this faction needs to be targeted, and so on and so forth. In that way, we get this very sprawling, almost epic story of of interfactional warfare within a criminal organization uh, in the world of the Japanese Yakuza as set forth by the cinematic palette of Takeshi Kitano. My goodness, what a ride this is. Now, we should point out, of course, that in that narrative construct, there are so many characters, first of all, that are presented so many that perhaps it might be maybe on initial view somewhat difficult to keep up with because of all not just all the the the, the numerous characters but also trying to uh, maintain an understanding as to uh, where the allegiances of these particular characters lie in a given point in time and so I get that and so I think that makes the film very rewatchable and so rewarding upon such rewatching. And I encourage you, if you are okay with an ultra-stylish, ultra-violent gangster film from Kitano, uh, that uh, you can watch and rewatch and rewatch Outrage and hopefully enjoy it uh, every single time and get something new out of it, which is what I do whenever I engage with this film. So the um, uh, but. Yes, so that means that there are so many characters here, and we always have to keep in mind, or I do whenever I watch it, who is who. Uh, so we have the, 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 the people in the San no Kai, or the, um, and the people at the top there, and, uh, and then we have underneath that, we have other uh, factions or organizations or families. And then we have other families that are sort of quasi-affiliated or not. So in that whole mix, we, in particular in this film, so the Ikemoto, Ikemoto family, and then Otomo, and then Murase, and then uh, San no Kai. And then in that complex lattice, of course, we get various characters uh, uh, all over the place. Uh, but it's so fun to try to keep up with them. So, we, so people like... Um, um, 
uh, so the head of the clan, and then Kato, and then Murase, and then Ikemoto, Otomo, Mizuno, uh, Ishihara, um, uh, Kimura, and, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. And then um, uh, we see the rivalries, the little incidents that build up. We see betrayal, we see loyalty, we see the code and honor versus modern day career step up building. We also see corrupt cops as well. Um, and the way that people try to manipulate others, a Machiavellian element overall. And we think that maybe these people are, are just, while they are violent criminals that carry out these really vicious acts, maybe they are also pawns, unwitting pawns in a much grander scheme, an unseen hand controlling all, maybe more than one hand from different vantage points perhaps. Uh, so all this stuff is uh, is going on in a, a a brilliant mix of confusion of betrayal and of yakuza violence so uh so this is i think a one of the strengths of the film in fact which is that it is giving us a very complex set of circumstances in this uh, complex web narratively constructed uh, and i think that makes it very fun it's a strength I think, because it shows us in a very interesting way the various levels of the, the way that this organization is run, all the way from the top right down to the very bottom and the, the quote-unquote uh, the foot soldier level. And then we see how even elements here have an impact all the way up to the top and even midway all the way up to the top and then vice versa. And we see perhaps how manipulations that might be seen on higher levels have a great impact and um, consequence all the way down to the seemingly uh, uh, foot soldier level positions. And uh, so that's very important. And I think that's uh, very key to the, to the engagement uh, accessibility of this film. Also, it's a strength of the film because it allows for, uh, in an essence, a kind of ensemble or network type of narrative, meaning we can follow different characters uh, and we can uh, follow this particular story and then this particular story and this particular story and this particular story. So it's, uh, it becomes, in a sense, like a network narrative, which is uh, uh, maybe an example of this that's uh, very famous is a film like Robert Altman's Nashville. This is in many ways a kind of, of, of Nashville uh, for uh, Japanese Yakuza gangster films, you know. And so I like that element. I like seeing how the characters are interconnected with each other. How is this character connected to this character? How is this character connected to this character? And then how those ca uh, connections blow up in this spectacular uh, fashion of of uh, cinema energy and violence in the Kitano way. Uh, so that is also very fascinating and that's a great strength. Also what that means is when we watch certain scenes play out in this film, it is very confusing and I mean this very positively, it is very confusing for me the viewer to know exactly who I should be rooting for here. I mean these are all arguably very immoral uh, uh, terrible people because of what they do. Uh, but then when we see uh, a terrible person and then a terrible person uh, basically colliding in a particular scene, then the question for us as the viewer, right, is which one do we side with? Because I think for me there is an inherent want or inherent uh, impulse to want to uh, uh, sort of to want to root for one person over the other in a scene that involves a clash between two characters. I think that's very natural. And so when we see that, it's very interesting uh, because sometimes in one scene we might be rooting for one character, but then in a completely different scene or a different part of the film, a different situation, maybe this character then becomes the, the antagonist that we are rooting against. So our allegiances as viewers can shift and change uh, at a given uh, moment or in a moment's notice, which is brilliant. It is absolutely wonderful to see these characters become um, 
uh, uh, these characters become protagonists or antagonists uh, to our very eyes uh, within the scope of maybe a scene shift or uh, uh, the passage of a, a bit of running time of the film. And that is, I think, really excellent because what that does is it creates the sense of dynamism and excitement and suspense in the film as we are following the narrative. Who do we root for? And even along the way as we are rooting for this person, they do these really terrible things, and then we want to root for someone else, and then we want to, and it becomes this wonderful, uh, this wonderful uh, way of uh, trying to balance all of the sense of of uh, where we should put our allegiances as viewers, and I think that's really uh, a testament to the to the great uh, labyrinthine uh, construction of this work, outrage. And among that, of course, we should say that there are uh, there are great performances, and they're great. These are really uh, uh, this is like top caliber stuff when it comes to uh, famous Japanese actors and their uh, performance. And this is also known for uh, uh, a lot of things in the Kitano canon. But uh, these actors are are uh, for the they, they are uh, actors that uh, will be working with Kitano for the first time on screen in this and so we haven't seen uh, many of these actors in past Kitano films but they appear here and they make a statement a bold statement and it's a brilliant one for that uh, but in the center of this as I say network narrative we have the character, or not center perhaps, but part of the network narrative, we have the character Otomo played by Beat Takeshi. And so it is undeniable. Whenever Beat Takeshi is on screen, you can't take your eyes off him. There is this ultra, ultra, ultra cool screen persona, this voltage that he gives off. And it's just now it, it's undeniable. Whenever he's on screen, he is just lighting up the screen, right? Don't get me wrong. Everyone else is so great. It's, it's just taking the, the, uh, the levels of Yakuza outrageousness to their extremes in this great, entertaining, uh, brutish manner. So wonderful. Perfect uh, acting all around. And then when Beat Takeshi comes in this Takeshi Kitano film, wow fireworks hanabi right fireworks go off and this is this is the 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 great thing beat takeshi's character is not necessarily the 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 character that uh, i mean it's it's hard to gauge because there are a other elements as i say it's a network narrative so it's not like we are following beat takeshi's character throughout the entirety of the film but when we get to his part of the film and when he emerges my goodness does he emerge and he really is uh, is a force of nature so uh, it's wonderful therefore to see a film that uh, really embodies what is so alluring and so attractive about the on-screen persona of Beat Takeshi especially in the world of a Yakuza film uh, and we've seen this before and this is another great example of that uh, that Beat Takeshi persona and then with that, I think uh, we can take a step back and see, or try to see, how this film is consistent in the catalog of filmography of, of Takeshi Kitano. And so far we have suggested, or I've tried to suggest, that this is a Yakuza film. And of course we've seen other Yakuza films in B. Takeshi's catalog in the past. A Sonatine brother, um, uh, and... Um, uh, boiling point and then we've seen other films that work in the Yakuza character or uh, maybe subplot so kids return or getting any uh, Takeshi's glory to the filmmaker a little bit uh, uh, but very noticeable in Achilles and the Tortoise even um, and Zatoichi and uh, uh, Hanabi as well a violent cop as well and so we see that element uh, carried on in the film Outrage uh, here in Outrage though what I would suggest too is while this is uh, consistent in that it's a Yakuza film made by Kitano it also feels like a a new take on the on the genre that we haven't seen from Kitano before because this is really dealing with uh, interfactional rivalry to a degree that we ha I would argue we haven't seen yet in a Kitano film. So it is, on the one hand, 
uh, very much consistent with what we have seen before, but it still feels fresh and new and different from what we have seen before. And I think therefore that makes this film uh, wholly successful and wildly inventive. And uh, another thing too is we see other elements that uh, I think are also existed in past Kitano films. It's wonderful, for example, to see the 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 uh, the policeman, the cop character uh, Kataoka in this film, and it's it's one of the the great uh, joys to see how his character is trying to interact with the world and it's a very crucial role and it reminds me also of how of uh, uh, the first film that uh, Chitano directed which is Violent Cop in an interesting way so I think there are great ties to that also in terms of adding and embellishing to the plot and narrative my goodness this is a great choice on the part of Kitano. Uh, also the way that certain uh, uh, scenes are set up in this film even the the very violent scenes and my goodness, we get this level of violence that is almost right, many times very difficult to stomach. And so uh, it's very intense stuff. But also uh, along the way, we do get certain uh, visual setups and uh, almost gags and uh, bits of humor mixed in or uh, we can laugh and also be horrified at the same time and I think we've seen this in past Kitano works how he is able to balance and walk the line the very fine line between the funny and the horrific the violent scenes and the the brand of the of the beat Takashi humor that he has been known for in Japan even up to now and so that I think makes for a film that is very typical and wonderfully so a very typical beat Takashi type of uh, filmmaking entertainment. So that's something that we have seen in the past. Also, I would say too that the ensemble nature of the narrative, the way that, that it seems to be, they're all related of course, but it seems to go from one uh, a subplot to another subplot to another subplot to another subplot, does also give rise to other types of ensemble-like narrative storytelling that we have seen in films like Getting Any and seen in Kids Return and um, uh, so uh, uh, and so and even Glory to the Filmmaker I would argue and so there is this way that he is um, uh, to borrow a, a phrase that he has used when describing say Takeshi's uh, in, in this kind of fractal like nature uh, trying to deal with uh, a, a in a brilliant way a brilliantly fractured narrative um, so I, I think that it's also a very much a, a part of why this is very consistent with the, uh, the Kitano filmography and then I should mention too that there is this aesthetic that is very much heightened by the use of the music the Keiji Suzuki music which is one of the best scores in a Kitano film in my view and we recall too that Suzuki had uh, provided the music for Zatoichi and I think there too and here as well there is this really palpable and interesting video game type of aesthetic and uh, it, uh, also I think a number of commenters and friends and viewers of the channel also pointed to perhaps that could also be linked to an anime or manga like aesthetic and I see that as well um, and uh, but uh, if I were to rely here for the moment on the video game aesthetic discussion I would say that there is this way that it does feel like the the way that characters are introduced and then dispatched the way that we follow one story and then it goes into uh, this uh, this way of of tracking from point A to point B uh, and then the, the good guy and then the bad guy. That has a certain type of video game aesthetic that is played out to a really great entertaining extreme in this film. And I think the music adds to that ambiance uh, in a, a really nice uh, uh, craft uh, uh, sort of way. So uh, uh, this is, I think, a continuation of that aesthetic that I would suggest we have seen in many uh, past Kitano films such as Zatoichi. Then I think maybe as a sort of closer, I should say that uh, you know one of the things that is very much a strong image of Kitano's films is the car, the automobile, and we see a lot of automobiles in this film, and there's almost a, a, a fetishizing nature 
of the camera and how it shoots automobiles and how people travel in these cars, in particular these black cars, and how this is somehow a symbol of the of the gangster as depicted by Kitano. We have seen cars depicted or shown in very interesting ways in the past films. I think, for, you know, uh, 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 Hanabi, Sonatine, I mean, a lot of very dramatic things happen in these cars. Uh, but also, to getting any, that's probably the ultimate Kitano car film, if you know that film. And so, uh, it's nice to see a continuation of the of the car uh, f- uh, fixation, if you will, by, by uh, Kitano here, really brilliantly done. Uh, so, therefore, to conclude this discussion, let me say... Uh, uh, that this is, once again, one of my absolute favorites. I see it as being uh, very consistent with Kitano's filmography, but also standing on its own. And it is a high-voltage, electrifying, engaging, exciting, energetic, and full of life and vigor in that way, that style, that kinetic energy that is so much uh, a, a part of who Takeshi Kitano is as an artist and so I love this film it is very intense very violent so uh, if that's not your cup of tea not to worry uh, but uh, you should probably uh, not watch this film if you don't like violent films but if you are okay with that and if you're okay with uh, the beat Takeshi brand of of, uh, entertainment and energy then of course of course this one is for you I, I think and there are more to come as well. So, uh, but let's hold off on that conversation for now. And then, uh, but let me say that I hope that this video finds you well. And until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. I really appreciate it. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers. Mm-hmm.